Good morrow, my sweet strangers. I'm bringing you my belated walkaway dress challenge. Stephanie Canada was so gracious and sent out the last round of guidelines and patterns to us late birds. I have watched enough videos to learn the battery grip print pattern is no good. So I downloaded the free pattern from the GBSB for comparison and had Stephanie's vintage pattern printed on a roll of paper. I traced the pattern on tissue paper for future adjustments. I should have known this project would not go as planned when I was unable to find the right fabric for a week. Just as I was getting desperate, I caught a glimpse of this beautiful poppy and daisy 100% cotton canvas. I bought it right away with a contrasting fabric and gave it a little wash in warm water to shrink it, clean it and stabilize the red color. While the fabrics were drying, I went over my patterns and tried to do some adjustments, which I'm going to describe later. Sunday morning I started with my breakfast as the rules called for. I summarized my battle plan for the day, enjoying my hot cup of fresh French pressed coffee with milk and my homemade apple strudel while watching my favorite YouTube videos. Okay, that's enough of my morning idyll. It's time to start the clock. So, I'm using the free full circle skirt pattern, which fortunately had my waist size. I decided to flip the pattern here to get the poppies on the fabric in the right direction. I also adjusted the length to 27 inches and added 2 inches for the hem. This is the front half, so I need to split it into quarters because there are side seams on the skirt. And then there is a back half circle, so I'm cutting a quarter on a fold. The original back piece pattern was way too big for me. So I'm using the free pattern as a base for the size and the original pattern for the shape of the side curve. I'm leaving about half inch extra room at the front of the waist so I can shorten it to fit later. For the front piece, I'm using Stefani's original pattern, where I enlarged the waist darts to fit my waist. I moved the side darts back as in the free pattern and made the neckline slightly bigger. I also adjusted the length according to the skirt length and added extra inch for side hems. I'm starting with sewing the skirt pieces together, one front panel to each side of the back panel. Next, I'm sewing darts on the back top piece. I'm hand stitching the skirt to the back top, so I can test the fit before committing. I'm also continuing a dart from the top piece with a little fold down the skirt. I sewed the darts on the front piece directly to save time, only to have to undo them later. As we say, there is never enough time to do it right, but always time to do it again. I don't know how to do fitting on myself, but luckily enough I have a decorative dress form that's very close to my size. It only has a slightly larger waist, which I can deal with. Here is where I put the little fold on the skirt under the top dart. The front darts were kind of okay, but the side darts were way back, at least for me. In the end, I decided to make the skirt an inch larger around my waist. All I needed to do was raise the skirt up in the waist to get a longer circumference. Don't forget to pin the center of the skirt to the center of the top piece first, so you don't end up with more skirt on either side. 
Also, watch out for the little fold under the top dart. Ok, that's much better. Now, after I moved the side darts on the front piece, I was left with the snip at the top from the previous dart. But I was going to trim it away before bias finishing. I have decided to just hem the sides of the front panel because the bias tape would not be visible there anyway. Then I adjusted the shoulder straps to the right length and hemmed the edges with zigzag stitch. At this point I would be either walking away in the dress for a dinner or stretching it to the next day and making it well. There was no reason to rush now, so when the time came to wrap the edges with bias tape, I first pinned it down, then hand stitched it and then sewed it on a machine. Next, I stitched three loops for the front button closure and three white retro buttons on the other side. And now, just to hem the skirt, right? Wrong. When I shortened the free skirt pattern by removing a few inches from the bottom, I expected it to be even. Well, that was a wrong assumption. After remeasuring, I found out the free pattern skirt had a longer front and back edge than the sides. So I had to adjust the pattern and straighten up the skirt. And because the bottom edge was over 5 yards long, I rather hand stitched the hem before running it through the machine. I'm using my grandma's technique for hemming the bottom of the skirts. First, sew close along the bottom fold. Remove the hand stitching. Then, with extreme care, cut off the excess hem. Make sure not to cut through your skirt. And when you're done, fold over the edge once more and pin it down. Sew along the edge once more, trying to get a bit further from the edge than the first time, so the fold attaches properly. If you run over the stitches at the back side, it's okay. And now you have a very delicately finished edge that shouldn't fray. I finished the front piece the same way. So, can the Butterick walkaway dress be done in under 4 hours? Yes. Will it fit? Most likely not. It needs a hell of a lot of adjustments and fitting. My heart is on the table cause you are my everything. I do, 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 I wanna marry you. Swear you around, I know it's true. Ooh, ooh, the way you make me feel is so good, baby. So good, so good. Every single day was fell apart.